a spy as you drive through town. We're a part of your community and help support the programs that make our neighborhood thrive. We take the time to get to know our customers. We know that every situation is unique and our goal is to understand yours so we can help you be confident about your financial security and your future. Call me, Sean O'Quinn, your local country financial representative today to talk about how we can help ensure that the future you're dreaming of is something you can proudly own no matter what it looks like. My number is 588-1051. Local news on WIFO. It's time now for a look, ladies and local news. In the news on Thursday, Coastal Pines Technical College, the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce, held its quarterly membership luncheon. The topic was the state of education here in Wayne County. On hand as guest speakers, Dr. Jay Brinson, of Wayne County School Superintendent, and Dr. Glenn Dybert, President of Coastal Pines Technical College. Also recognized at the luncheon was this year's star student at Wayne County High School. And for that announcement, here was Eric Denny with the Press Sentinel. Star student is the local student who has the highest SAT score in one city and is in the top percent of their high school class. The star student then is able to select the teacher who has had the biggest impact on their uh, their education and their career. And so it's my honor to, uh, today to honor, to recognize, to announce uh, Wayne County star student. Um, I'm one of Christina Thomas's biggest fans. Uh, she, to me, she's really a a, a, a Renaissance young lady. Um, the criteria is the high score on the SAT, and she scored 1,500 in one sitting out of 1,600. Now you can super score your your SATs, and so she has a, a higher SAT score, but she, she took that in sitting at 1,500. And Christina Thomas, the daughter of Eddie and Sabrina Thomas, again, she's has been selected as the or she has won the star student. Her, she selects her star teacher, star teacher on hand at the banquet, Tammy Sellers. First to speak at the banquet, Dr. Jay Brinson, who discussed Wayne County's education, how much progress has been made over the past few years with the construction of the new elementary schools. Dr. Brinson stated that the final two schools were built about the same year and came in six months ahead of schedule. Dr. Brinson, proud to announce how well test scores have improved as back in 2012, Wayne County ranks 17th out of 18 school districts in the Risa District and well below the state average, but currently ranks 7th out of 18 schools and above the state average. Graduation rates are also at an all-time high. Here's a portion of Dr. J. Brinson's presentation on Thursday. I just want to share with you a little bit kind of where we are academically, okay? Uh, probably the first thing I want to point out is last the last graduation rate to come out, our high school graduation rate was 87%. That's the highest it's ever been. All right, and I'll just remind you, uh, back when I was a uh, teacher, coach, at Wayne County High School back in the early 2000s, that's kind of when, you know, AYP, No Child Left Behind come out, and it was really starting to focus on what's going on in the schools, the accountability piece, which is a good thing. Uh, our graduation rate was in the 50s. Remind you that. You may not remember that or aware of that. You go from 50% um, to 87%. And really, today's calculation formula is a lot more stringent. It is, uh, it's done in your uh, enroll. In Wayne County High School, your hours until you graduate or you enroll in another high school. Um, I also want to mention the new accountability, that CCRPI that I mentioned. You know, that's our comprehensive school improvement, accountability, and communication platform that the state of Georgia uses. And it's all encompassing. It encompasses a lot of different factors, uh, not just test scores. You hear a lot about high state's test scores, and that's certainly part of it. Um, but it also has in that total score, that 0 to 100 score, um, CTA pathways, we're good at acronyms. You know, that's our career, technical, and agricultural education. Uh, we have what we call pathways, which means that they complete a certain amount of courses in a pathway. Um, we, we consider them a pathway completer. That's in the CCRPI. Um, percentage of students going to, you know, post-secondary uh, college, um, whether it's university system or technical college, if they go there, they don't have to take remediation. If you have a question or concern, please share it with me. I, you know, 
call me crazy, but my cell phone number is on my business card. I mean, that's uh, so I'm accessible. And so it, it, it's tough sometimes when you hear things out there that it's miscommunication. Um, certainly ask, but we want good information out there. And that's my goal moving forward uh, with the East Plaza from now. And, uh, we'll, is to educate our community what we're doing, what we plan to do, and what the education is all about. You know, I think we can pass the thing easily in November if people are educated. <coughs> vote A, vote, at least get the, all the information and make a wise decision. If you make a wise decision to vote no, that's, that's called America. You can do that. But at least get the good information. Dr. Brinson stresses that he and the board want to have several town hall meetings to discuss the upcoming vote on the East Bloss in November. Brinson says the school system deals with the two most precious items in the county, your kids and your money. Dr. Brinson says transparency is the best medicine. Again, he says he has, he's accessible. If you have any questions or concerns, simply contact him directly. He'll be glad to discuss it with you. And the East Bloss vote takes place in November. Coastal Pines Technical College President Dr. Glenn Divert also spoke, commenting on how happy they are that Coastal Pines was named 2017 Technical College of the Year. He says their graduation rate and test scores are up as well. Here were his comments on Thursday. Our graduation rate, 87 percent, sounds just like the high school. But I'll tell you, for post-secondary, we're probably averaging in the 60s, and we're about 20 points ahead of the statewide average. There were only two other technical colleges in the 70s. Everyone else was in the 50s and 60s. So um, our staff has done a great job there. And following the merger. Um, we've been consolidating positions as people retire and making other moves and shifting people around on the bus. And so we had, uh, in the state, we had the highest efficiency increase of any college, and we saved costs by, I think it was 11 point something percent this last year. All of those costs have gone to offering new instructional programs, which you'll see in just a minute. And then we have a lot of programs that have licensure pass rates from respiratory to red tech to practical nursing to nurse aid, um, just a whole slew of programs. Overall, for the college, we had a 95% pass rate on those. So um, the faculty and staff have done a great job there as well. And again, those comments of Glenn Diver, president of Coastal Pines Technical College. Again, Dr. Glenn Diver, Dr. Brinch, and the two speakers at the Chamber of Commerce quarter membership luncheon held yesterday at Coastal Pines Technical College. We'll come back with more news after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages. So please stay tuned. Totally transparent car buying. With Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC live market pricing, know for certain you're buying at the low market price. We constantly monitor multiple auto and competitor websites to always offer the most aggressive market prices. No games, no gimmicks, no kidding. That's why Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC is the home of the no-hassle deal. Skip the runaround and discover the difference of truly transparent buying on every new and pre-owned vehicle every day. We're online just like you, and we continuously scan pricing on hundreds of vehicles to update prices in real time. At Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC, know for certain that our live market price is the low market price. Experience a new and totally transparent way to buy with live market pricing. Chevy, find new roads. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness. Emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers, are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties for over 13 years. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the only nonprofit hospice in Wayne County. Our new administrative offices, located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard, have opened recently as Phase 1 of our building project. Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria, regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak to someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice, and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia, working to add life to your days. Long County Health Department is offering free flu shots from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Tuesday, February 20th to those ages 3 years of age and older. Shots will be given on a first-come, first-served basis while supplies last. The flu is widespread throughout the state of Georgia. More than 300 people have been hospitalized with flu-related illnesses across the state. 
and 50 people have lost their lives due to the flu this flu season. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, flu season usually peaks between December and February. However, flu season can last into spring. The Coastal Health District MD Lawton Davis says this has been extremely rough flu season. The entire country has been hit hard. They say it's not too late to get vaccinated against the flu. We would encourage those who have not been vaccinated to take advantage of this opportunity. Flu symptoms include fever, cough, sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, body aches, headaches, chills, fatigue, and sometimes vomiting. Again, they state the if you do have the flu, they stay stay home for at least 24 hours after the fever is gone, except to get medical care or other necessities. They state the fever should be gone without the use of fever reducing medications. And they state while sick, limit contact with others as much as possible to keep from infecting them. Again, the flu shots being given Tuesday, February 20th. If you need more information, call the Long County Health Department. The number is 545-2107. Long County Health Department located at 584 North Macon Street in Little Wissy. Wayne County, Cham- Wayne County Tourism Board getting ready for their hog jam. The dates are February 16th through February 18th. The statewide hunt begins at 2 p.m. that Friday, February 16th, ends on Sunday, February 18th at 2 p.m. Registration for the hunt will close at 6 on Friday, February 16th, with on-site registration available at hunt headquarters at the J.C. Fair building. Online registration will be open through midnight. Registration is $50 for bow or gun hunters, and hunters can only hunt in one category. Hunter 16 and under hunt free with a registered adult hunter. All hogs must be weighed into the J.C. Fairgrounds in Jessup, but participants can hunt anywhere in the state or any of the connecting states, they have legal permission to do so. Hunters must be in line and weigh in at two by two p.m. or they're disqualified. Registration for the hog jams available online through Active.com or the Wayne County Board of Tourism's website, WayneTourism.com. Again, the Wayne County Tourism's Hog Jam popular event set for February 16th through February the 18th. Local elections for school board and county commission seats take place this year. Qualifying gets underway less than 30 days as qualifying begins March the 5th at 9 a.m., ends on March 9th at 12 noon. Qualifying fee for a commissioner seat is $54, cost to run for school board $100. And on Monday night, we talked with the commissioners. Most state they're running for re-election. School board members, they state several are not running for re-election. Again, those running for re-election or running for election will be qualifying on March the 5th through the 9th. And as soon as we find out who all is running, we'll have those lists for you right here on Big Dog Country, FM 105.5. We'll come back with the final news note about the elections right after this word from our sponsor, the Commercial Messages, so please stay tuned. Totally transparent car buying. With Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC live market pricing, know for certain you're buying at the low market price. We constantly monitor multiple auto and competitor websites to always offer the most aggressive market prices. No games, no gimmicks, no kidding. That's why Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC is the home of the no-hassle deal. Skip the runaround and discover the difference of truly transparent buying on every new and pre-owned vehicle every day. We're online just like you, and we continuously scan pricing on hundreds of vehicles to update prices in real time. At Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC, know for certain that our live market price is the low market price. Experience a new and totally transparent way to buy with live market pricing. Chevy, find new roads. Morton Collision is located at 1320 West Pine Street in Jessup. Morton's offers free estimates, 23-hour towing, and they guarantee their work. Call 427-3769 or after hours, 912-294-6140. The staff at Morton Collision Center works with all insurance companies. So for guaranteed work with a qualified staff, go to Morton Collision at 1320 West Pine Street in Jessup. Morton Collision, quality you can see. The helpful folks at Harris Ace Hardware says thank you for choosing them as your favorite place to buy hardware and building materials. At Harris Ace Hardware, they've got what you need to get any project done. You'll find great deals on everything to paint a room, clean your home, or take care of your yard. And lumber and building supplies from everything to build a new home to a doghouse. Harris Ace has the names you trust like Clark and Kensington, Craftsman and Scott's, Yeti Coolers, and the helpful advice you need to tackle any task. For the people and brands you can trust, shop at Harris Ace Hardware. 
Final note, anyway, Wayne County is conducting elections this year, but before voters head to the polls, they need to be made aware of the fact that the county is proposing consolidating the current 14 voting precincts to just seven. They state the purpose is to reduce the cost of taxpayers for maintaining these extra polling places with electricity, phones, restrooms, and heat and air, as well as maintenance of the buildings. With the implementation of the voting by mail by for 45 days prior to each election and early voting taking place at the Wayne County Courthouse for three weeks prior to each election, the county says it's no longer necessary to maintain the 14 voting precincts here in Wayne County. And that coming from the Board of Registrars and the Wayne County Commissioners. Final decision will be made at a public hearing on February 15th at 7 p.m. at the County Commissioner's Meeting Room located at 341 East Walnut Street. Anyone wishing to object to this consolidation shall do so in writing, stating the reason for such objection, and may file such objections at the Office of the Judge of Probate Court located at 359 East Walnut Street in Jessup. And if you have any objections or you want to file your objection, they ask that you please do so by no later than February 14th at 2 p.m. If you have any questions, you can contact Mrs. K. Arnold, Chief Voter Registrar in Wayne County, the number 427-5950. Again, the public hearing is taking place on February 15th at 7 p.m., and they stress that following the public hearing, the final decision will be made on the proposed changes before elections take place this year. Precinct 1, Madrid Springs and Odom would vote at the Odom Recreation Center. Precinct 2, Oglethorpe and Red Hill. Precinct would vote at Red Hill. Precinct 3, Rich would merge into Scriven and vote at the Scriven Community Center. Precinct 4, Altamont Precinct and VFW would vote at Bennett Union Church. Precinct 5, Union and Empire Precinct would vote at Union Church of God. Precinct 6, Mount Pleasant would merge into Gardai and they would vote at Gardai Community Center. And Precinct 7, Pine Street and the Rec Center would vote at the Rec Center. Once again, if you have any questions or objections, contact K. Arnold at 427-5950. Once again, the public hearing taking place on February 15th at 7 p.m. at the County Commissioner's Meeting Room. And again, they stress following the public hearing, the final decision will be made on the proposed changes. That's going to do it for latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan said have a great day. You've been listening.